order to communicate to a computer i need to give a instruction then by making of or by using of what we can give the instruction that to by making use of this input devices in order to enter both numerical and character type of data so there we are giving the input in the terms of numbers as well as in the terms of character wireless keyboard as the name indicates it's wireless so no need to have any of the wire or a physical connection which doesn't require in order to connect this kind of keyboard to the computer Hello everybody, a warm welcome to one and all. Welcome back to the session 2 of chapter 1 in the unit 2 of BCA's first semester subject called Fundamentals of Computers. I am Rohini TS, Department of Computer Science, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. So before getting into our today's session, we'll just have a quick recap of our previous session. In the last session of this unit, we had a discussion regarding functions of computer. There we had a discussion how the input is given to the computer, how the processing has been done and how uh, data and information will going to be converted into uh, output and also how it will going to be stored in a computer's memory. Everything that we have learnt in the functions of a computer and also we got to know regarding what is microprocessor and what are the different terminologies with respect to that microprocessor you are supposed to remember and also we had a discussion regarding storage units and also we got to know how the program is going to be executed in the CPU and also so we got to know regarding microcontroller at last we had a discussion regarding difference between microprocessor and microcontroller so in our today's session we'll start with our input devices whatever we have in a computer along with that you will get to know what is input unit or input device and also in that we have a keyboard mouse scanner joystick ocr omr and micr all these are the concepts which i will be discussing in my today's session let me get into it first we'll see what do you mean by input Input device. First you need to understand why do we require input unit. So input unit is what? Collection of one or more input devices and input device will going to take the data from user and that data will be fed to the computer in order to do the processing. For that reason we require this input device. Mainly it is going to connect external word to the computer. So in order to communicate to a computer I need to give an instruction. Then by making of or by using of what we can give the instruction that too by making use of this input devices. So that an input device is used to feed the data into the computer. In order to give a data as an input to the computer we require this input device and it's capable capable of converting data into a form which can be recognized by a computer. So we have to give a input which needs to be understood by the computer and computer has to produce a resultant which should be understood by the user. So in that concept here whatever the data that we are giving should be understood by the computer then only it is able to do the processing and also here we have a several types of input devices for example you can take the keyboard mouse and also we have a trackball joystick scanner light pen barcode reader and then ocr omr micr so list goes on like that fine so these are the input devices and also you can see the node the device which is used to accept the data and instruction from the user will be considered as what input device that input device is taking a data from the user the data and instruction will be taken by the user by making use of this input device we'll see the first one in that we have a keyboard keyboard is what most commonly used and it's mandatory somehow in order to work with a computer system the most common input device is what keyboard mainly it is going to helpful for us in order to enter both numerical and character type of data so there we are giving the input in the terms of numbers as well as in the terms of character so here you can see the image of keyboard right so and also it's like a mechanical typewriter it is going to have a alphanumeric both alphabets and numbers will be there along with the special keys and punctuation keys and also it includes the functional keys in order to perform a specific task and also this keyboard will going to contain 101 keys or 104 keys so in general up to 111 or 108 keys will be there in the keyboard that will be based on the type of keyboard that we are using and also so it will going to detect the key which is going to be pressed by the user and that is generating the correct
corresponding ASCII code. That is what American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Whatever the characters we have in a keyboard, every character has its equivalent ASCII code. So whenever we are pressing any of the keys in a keyboard, that will be converted into its ASCII code. Then that value will be again converted into binary number, which can be easily understood by the computer which can be recognized by the computer here. This is how in what a keyboard will going to work. And then what are the different types of keyboards we have? So we have a five types of keyboard and that first one is what standard keyboard and also we are calling this keyboard as what QWERTY keyboard. Why? Because in the first row of a keyboard, first we have uh, these six letters that is what uh, Q, W, E, R, T and Y. That is why it is considered as what standard keyboard and it is also considered as what QWERTY keyboard and mainly it is going to have a uh, the alphabets or a keys up to 105 or 108. We'll see the second type that is ergonomics keyboard. So whenever we are using a keyboard for uh, most of the time or whenever we are using it for longer time and that can cause uh, some stress to the muzzle. In order to reduce that muzzle stress of a arm, there we are going to have this ergonomics keyboard. So mainly as per the study of method that can reduce the stress on the muscles in order to avoid repetitive strain injury. So that may cause uh, certain diseases to the uh, muscles of an arm. That's why it needs to be. That means uh, we have to take care about that. In order to reduce that stress on the muscle, we are going to use this ergonomics keyboard. It is mostly deals with optimizing posture and technique while working so that the work can be carried out in the easiest manner. So here you can see the ergonomic keyboard. It will going to reduce the stress on the muscles of a arm. Next we have a wireless keyboard. As the name indicates, it's wireless. So no need to have any of the wire or a physical connection which doesn't require in order to connect this kind of keyboard to the computer. So it is a keyboard that does not need to connect to the computer via wires. And also it makes very convenient for the use of a keyboard and very comfortable. So if there is no wire connection in between the keyboard and mouse, so you can uh, port it and you can use that with comfort and then wireless keyboards use the Bluetooth or IR that is infrared rays in order to connect to the computer. Then how we are going to build a connection between the computer and keyboard by making use of this Bluetooth or by the IR or infrared rays. So these are the three types. Next we have a virtual keyboard as the name indicates which is not physically present virtual in nature. That is what one of the application software. So by making use of that software we can let that software on the floors or on the any of the surface. Then we can use the keyboard as it is physically presented. So it is a software device that led to use the input data just like hardware keyboard. So no need to have a physical keyboard. So by making use of this virtual keyboard, that is what we are using in our mobile phones. Those are all what virtual keyboard in that will going to open up as an application and can be controlled by a mouse or via touch screen. So that is what we are having in our mobile phones. That's what uh, considered as what virtual keyboard. So here you can see the image of that virtual keyboard. Next we have a compact keyboard which we can see in the laptops are considered as what compact keyboard. Why? Because these are slim and usually do not have the numeric keypad. So it doesn't contain any special numeric keypad in the keyboard and that is present on the right side of the keyboard. So that is not there in this compact keyboard and also mainly we are going to use this kind of keyboard in the laptops. So these are the different types of keyboards which we can see. Next what we have mouse. Next input device is mouse here and this is also one of the most um, commonly used input device. And it will going to control the movement of the cursor on the display screen. That cursor will going to specify the particular location in the computer. And then what about this uh, abbreviation of mouse? It stands as mechanically operated user serial engine. So mouse is abbreviated as mechanically operated user serial engine. And also we are calling this mouse as a pointing device. So it is going to point to a particular location on the computer and mouse is a small device you can roll it you can navigate along the flat surface there will be a flat surface on it you can roll the mouse or you can navigate the direction wherever you wanted to point and also here we have a small ball or 
IR rays or infrared rays there that is kept inside and touches the pad through a hole at the bottom of the mouse. When that uh, IR or small ball which is touching on the flat surface that will going to generate the signal. By that signal the input device that mouse is going to able to take the input from the user. And here you can see we have a two types of mouse. One is mechanical mouse and optical mouse. So this is mechanical mouse. This is optical mouse. Fine. So whenever you see this mechanical mouse at that time you can see one uh, rubber ball is there. So when that rubber ball touches on that flat surface then it will going to generate the signal. But in the optical mouse it is going to deal with a Bluetooth or IR or infrared rays. So when it is touching on that flat surface at that time it is going to generate the signal. So in the mechanical mouse, this mouse has a small rubber ball underneath that moves against two rollers as it passes across a flat surface. With the help of this, this will going to generate a electrical signal. Then we have a optical mouse that mouse has more accuracy than this uh, mechanical mouse and also it has no moving parts. So here we are not using any of the balls or any of the physical things which is not going to be there in the optical mouse. So it has no moving parts that uses a laser in order to detect the movement. So then it will going to find out the location then it is going to help us in order to do the pointing object. That's all regarding what? Mouse. What is the next input device? That's all regarding joystick. So if you look into this, then you will be what most fond of this joystick. Why? Because mainly we are going to use this joystick in order to play games. Fine. Joystick is an input device that consisting of a stick that pivots on a base. So here you can see that here we have a stick that is going to be pivot on the base. This is what the base and this is what the stick and reports its angle and direction to the device it is controlling. Mainly for the purpose of controlling and navigation we are going to use this joystick and that has a stick with the help of that stick that is going to be attached to the base and it is going to help us in order to do the navigation or that will going to report the angle based on that the navigation or movement will going to takes place. And it can be moved in all the four directions. So it can be moved right, left, up, down. So all the four directions you can see here that can be moved. And the function of the joystick is similar to that of the mouse. Mainly for the purpose of pointing and for the navigation or controlling or movement of a device. We are going to use this joystick and also mainly we are going to use this input device for the purpose of computer games. Other than computer games, wherever can we use this? You can see this kind of uh, joystick machines or uh, input devices in the cranes for the moment or in order to regulate its navigation and trucks, underwater unmanned vehicles. So when there is a automatic vehicles there you can have this uh, joystick and servo valence cameras. It is going to be rotated in all the four directions and zero turning radius lawn movers. So these are the different application where we can use this joystick. Next what we have here, that's what scanner. The scanner is also an input device which works more like a photocopy machine. It works like a what a uh, uh, Xerox machine. So how can we say this as a photocopy machine? Whatever the input that we are giving as an hard copy, hard copy is the input here which is already printed on a uh, paper. Then we are giving that as an input to the scanner. Then it is going to scan from the first line to last line or la end of the page. Then it will going to convert that hard copy into some soft copy which can be manipulated later. So it is used when some information is available on a paper. Then we are calling that as what? Hard copy and it is to be transferred to the computer for further manipulation. That will be converted into soft copy. So we can use that in order to do the manipulation and also it will going to capture the images from the source from the source in the sense what that source is what we are giving as an hard copy that hard copy is the source here which are then converted into digital form and which can be manipulated or modified by making use of a computer fine this is how scanner work but uh, there are some criteria you need to remember so whatever the input that we are giving should be clear 
and if the paper size is very large if it is not fitting to the scanner then you can't expect the accurate result so based on the type of input which we are giving based on that the quality of the resultant of the scanner will going to be determined next what we have here that is omr in short that is optical mark reader or recognition so most of the time you all have used this omr in your competitive examination right in order to mark with the help of pen or pencil so wherever we are using dark blue pen or uh, black pen that would be easy in order to deal with this omr we'll see how this will going to work it is also input device that reads pen or pencil marks and convert them into computer processable form so in this here you can see the example of omr sheet here there you have to fill that omr sheet or boxes with pen or pencil whenever we are feeding this as an input to that omr or optical mark recognition or a reader that is going to understand or it will going to convert or it uh, fetches that marks and converts that into computer recognizable form and also here we have a special pre printed forms are designed with boxes that can be boxes or circles those are the two most commonly used shapes there so within that box only we have to fill the data and can be marked with a dark pencil or we can use the ink so such documents are read by the reader or this omr which transcribes the marks into electrical pulses already they are going to set or they have some pre printed forms so they are, it is going to make a matching so if matching of input is matching with a already stored data then it will going to generate the result so whenever that marking is strike over this uh, scanner or whenever that mark is strike over this uh, recognizer then it will going to generate that electrical pulses then that will be transmitted to the computer then computer will going to understand that as a signal then it will going to generate the output so they are widely used in the application where we can have that objective type answer papers evaluation so instead of correcting every objective type uh, papers so we can feed that kind of object papers into objective papers into the omr then it will going to be easy for the evaluation purpose and in which large number of candidates appear and also we can use this omr in order to have this time sheets of factory employees so these are the different application where we can get the benefit from this omr next what we have that is ocr optical character recognition so it's somehow like a scanner itself here already we have some hard copy or a printed form of a data then that we are giving to the ocr then that ocr will going to recognize the character sometime it can be hard copy or it can be hand written also if it is more intelligent and uh, upgraded version of ocr then it is also able to go with a bilinguistic or multilinguistic languages so the main use of these devices is to recognize the alphabet and numeric character which is printed on a paper so whatever the data which is printed on a paper then this ocr will going to recognize what character or what alphabet is is that then ocr technique permits the direct reading of any printed character without any special ink so here you no need to mark anything whatever already we have as a not copy that is given as a input to this ocr then it is able to read all those things with this ocr users can scan a page from a book so we are able to get to know is like what google lens it is going to scan the character which is already there the computer will recognize the characters in the page as a letters and punctuation marks and that is going to be stored and this can be edited by making use of a word processor you can change its size width depth height whatever you wanted to change with the size you can change that so these are the possibilities we have or which can be uh, changed by making use of this ocr or optical character recognition next we'll see what are the applications of this ocr this can be mainly used in the credit card billing for the purpose of credit card billing and also in order to read a pin code so whenever we wanted to sort the uh, pin number based on the geographical area at that time you can get the benefit of this ocr or optical character recognition nation we'll go to the next input device that's what magnetic ink character recognition in short that is micr so you might have seen this micr in the banks so why it is uh, will be used in the banks in order to find out or to find out the truthness of the 
check. There we are going to use this MICR. It's a form of character recognition that reads the text which is printed with a magnetic characterized ink or magnetic charged ink. So in this MICR or by making use of this MICR, we can find out what is the check number. So each check number is unique from one check to another check that is written by making use of this magnetic charged ink. So in order to check the truthness, we are going to use this MICR and also the shape of the character by sensing the magnetic charge in the ink and that will going to be translated these shapes into the computer process format. So well, that shapes which is written by making use of this magnetic charge ink will be recognized by this MICR and that will be translated into machine or computer understandable form and also mainly we are going to use this in the banks in order to process the checks in order to find the truthness of a checks there we are going to have this MICR and the check can be read by making use of a special input unit which recognizes the magnetic ink character. So in that check the MICR code will be there that will be recognized by this MICR. This method will going to eliminate the manual errors. So sometimes we may be wrong whenever we are find outing or whenever we are getting the numbers whether it is 7 or 1 uh, 4 or 7 there could be some manual errors in order to avoid that we have this MICR and also mainly it is going to save the time and security is also going to be very high and accuracy of data also we can expect in the MICR. So by making use of this MICR we can process the checks of banks. I hope you all understood our today's session regarding input device. So in our coming session, we're going to see what do you mean by output devices and what are the different example we have with respect to the output device. Let me meet you there. Until that, keep learning, keep on growing. Thank you.